Hey there, I'm Joe Weems. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you about NGConf 2023 happening in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 14th and 15th. Head over to ngconf.org to check out the speakers, check out the talks, and to get your ticket before they all sell out. We'll see you there. What's up, folks? Thanks a lot for checking oh, out my okay. talk. Today, we're going to cover TSLint to ESLint in just five minutes. Naturally, we won't be able to cover every use case in depth in that time, but I'm going to go through a live migration with you, and I'll also give you all the information you need to find out more. Naturally, the history of this relates to the Angular CLI team deprecating the use of TSLint and Codalyzer in the Angular CLI in version 11 to correspond with TSLint's actual deprecation and the full uh, ng-lint builder implementation being removed in Angular 13. Fortunately, I was able to provide an alternative solution using ESLint through my project Angular ESLint, and that's available on GitHub at Angular ESLint slash Angular ESLint. Everything I'll cover today is also covered on the README, and you will also find all the information about the different migrations you can perform. As noted with the timeline, we're actually on Angular 12 here, which is the version that a lot of folks have felt stuck on with the fact that the ng-lint implementation for TSLint was removed in Angular 13. So that's what we're going to be using for our example of migrating from TSLint to ESLint. The thing that makes it more representative of kind of a larger project is that we have not just a root app, but we also have a library project here called Libby. So for the sake of brevity, I have to assume you're familiar with the structure of Angular CLI projects. We have this root tslint.json file, and then also for the library project, it has its own tslint.json file, which inherits from that root tslint file. Now, as long as you understand that structure, you know enough to follow along with this talk. So we don't have much time, let's get straight into it. If we run ng-lint now, we'll see the Angular CLI's deprecation warning about TSLint support going away. And uh, that's our starting point. So let's get adding the Angular ESLint schematics package. We're gonna use ng-add for this, and at Angular ESLint slash schematics. Specifically, we're gonna install version 12 because the way the Angular ESLint is uh, set up is to align the major version of its packages to the major version of the Angular framework and the Angular CLI. So we'll install Angular schematics, Angular Slint schematics v12. Once that installation is complete, all that's happened is we've added the Angular ESLint packages, the TypeScript ESLint packages, and ESLint itself. Now if we run our conversion for the first time, we're gonna run a schematic. So we're gonna run ngg or ng-generate, and it's gonna be from that Angular ESLint schematics collection. The name of the schematic we're going to run is very simply convert TSLint to ESLint. The only thing this schematic needs as an argument is the name of a project. So to show that this can be done project by project in a large workspace and it can be done over time, uh, we're going to first transform the Libby project, the library project. So this first option is not so relevant for right now because we have another project left afterwards. For this second option, we are going to choose yes, that we're going to start with the recommended ESLint config as it exists today. Um, rather than converting our existing rules. But the concept is exactly the same. It just helps fit into this five minute talk the more concise config that we've got. As we can see from the summary here, the Angular CLI with its schematics has done quite a few things. Um, one of which is that it's created an eslintrc.json at the root to go alongside the tslint.json. It's not removed it. Because we're still using tslint, we still need it in there. All we're doing in the root ESLint rc.json is inheriting from the Angular ESLint recommended set. And our project level ESLint rc.json is extending from that root just like the TSLint one used to do. As well as changing the config to be ESLint, we've also changed our ng-lint implementation details by swapping the builder from Angular dev kit to the Angular ESLint builder package. And this is what allows us to continue running ng-lint, but be running something completely different under the hood. Running this now, we can see that we get the same TSLint output for the root project, but we get the ESLint output for Libby. We actually have an error here because the recommended set is picking up on the fact that we have an empty lifecycle hook. If we rapidly fix that up here, just for an example of showing the full lint run with no issues, run it again, and sure enough, we get the output from both TSLint and ESLint passing. 
Let's rapidly convert our other project, our main root project. For this first option, we do want to say yes, please remove TSLint and Codalyzer once we have no more TSLint usage in our, in our repo. And we'll also inherit from the ESLint config again. This time, as well as converting the projects and deleting TSLint file, we're also going to clean up the package JSON. We're going to remove TSLint and Codalyzer, and our workspace is now fully migrated from TSLint to ESLint. Running ng-lint proves this. We have all of our information from both uh, ESLint projects. Thanks so much for checking out my talk, and I really hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.